The release of the annual American Mahjong card brings delight to many players, but anxiety for others. Here are some ideas that may help you relax, build your skills, have fun, and stay motivated throughout the year. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. Mahjong has been played in America since the 1920s. In those days, the game was played with rules written by Joseph Babcock, the American businessman who imported the game from China. In the early 1930s, some ladies in New York modified the rules and created a special card with prescribed hands. This card was released on an annual basis to keep the game fresh, but also some of the proceeds of the card sales would go to local charities. This tradition caught on with other synagogues and it spread nationwide. Eventually, the National Mahjong League was formed and the style of play became known as American Mahjong. Let's talk about the four phases in the life cycle of an American Mahjong card. Phase one, anticipation. This phase in the life cycle of an American Mahjong card is when players anticipate the release of the card. The National Mahjong League releases the card in April some players wonder why they don't release the card in January, and it's really about logistics. During the summer, people take vacations. In August, a group of players tests hands that were submitted by players throughout the year. They also test hands from previous year's cards. In October, they submit hands they'd like to see on next year's card to a committee. This committee meets in November. They review the hands and decide which hands will go on next year's card. They also review the rules of the game. They decide if any changes need to be made to the back of the card and any rules that are changed will be announced in January when the bulletin is released. Also, there's a book called Mahjong Made Easy. All the rules and guidelines are in there and you can purchase it on their website. The committee sends everything to production in December. January is when the bulletin is released. This bulletin has a note from the league, letters from the community, FAQs, frequently asked questions from the community. It's typically to clarify rules and announce new rules or change in guidelines. The National Mahjong League delivers the cards in two batches initially. Any orders placed before mid-February are sent in the first batch. Players typically receive their card at the end of March or the beginning of April. If players ordered after mid-March, they'll receive their card towards the end of April and the beginning of May. So if you want to get your card in the first batch, order before mid-February. Every American Mahjong player has some level of anxiety in regards to the release of the new card. It's really the fear of the unknown. But have no fear, because the game stays the same. You do not have to relearn how to play American Mahjong. The rules, for the most part, stay the same. If there are any changes to the rules, whether it be clarifications, modifications, or rarely, a new rule, those will be announced on the National Mahjong League website and they will also be announced in the annual bulletin, which is sent in January. There's also a booklet called Mahjong Made Easy with all the rules and guidelines for the game. This can be purchased on the National Mahjong League website. The rules, for the most part, stay the same. 
the categories on the card stay the same. The methods in describing the hands, the colors, the letters, the numbers, those stay the same. The combinations themselves change. The combinations being the blocks or shapes of the hand. For example, some years the common shape of a hand is pung kong pung kong but in other years it might be pung pung kong kong also the patterns might change and this would be like knitted hands where you have two suits blocks one and three are one suit block two and four are the second suit also sequences might change. There are two categories on the card that always have a ripple effect on the other categories on the card. The first is the year category. Always consider the number tiles for the given year. Those number tiles are going to be hot commodities and they can impact other categories on the card. For example, for 2020, there are twos for that category that will impact evens and consecutive run using little numbers. The other category that will have a ripple effect on other categories on the card is addition. This category is math play. It uses the same shapes, kong of flowers, kongs of two numbers that equal a product the numbers in these categories will impact other categories on the card. For example, in 2019, fives were kongs in every hand. That impacted consecutive run because five is the middle number in a sequence one through nine. It also impacted odds where we have all odd tiles, one, three, five, seven, nine, and one, three, five for little odds, five, seven, nine for big odds. Those fives, in addition, impacted the fives in odds. Always look at the year category and addition to see how the numbers are going to affect the other categories on the card. The other interesting ripple effect is flowers. The way that the flowers are used on the card can make a big difference in strategy for that year. Some years there are a lot of hands with pairs of flowers. Some years there are kongs of flowers. Some years pungs of flowers. Some years double pungs of flowers. I have found year to year, flowers are always a hot commodity. But if there are big blocks or multiple blocks of flowers on the card, they're gonna be even hotter. Phase two, acclimation. This phase in the life cycle of an American Mahjong card is the honeymoon period. This is when players acclimate to the new card. When you open, your card. Read it thoroughly. Pay special attention to the text in the parentheses because that's where you're given both limitation and flexibility. If you have a set of tiles at home, do hands-on exercises. These are the exercises I highly recommend and I have videos on all of them. The first is what I call category modeling. Have all your tiles right side up on the table. Build each hand and make modifications to those hands based on the text in the parentheses. It's a great way to learn those subtle changes to the shapes and patterns on the card. The next exercise is called Charleston modeling. This is where you have the tiles upside down. You take random tiles to create a dealt hand and then you create a mock Charleston. You go through the Charleston and make decisions with the tiles. 
It's a great way to learn the card. The next exercise is called Charleston Chain Reaction. It's very interesting with American Mahjong. You can play different categories with the same tiles depending on the decisions that you make through the Charleston. That's why I call it Chain Reaction. There's another exercise that you can do to play categories that you might avoid. This is called Charleston Force. You pick pre-selected categories and you force hands in those categories. There's also an exercise called Charleston Sprints. This is how you can push yourself to make quicker and quicker decisions by lowering the time frame for the sprints. For example, when you first get the new card, give yourself maybe five minutes to make decisions through a mock Charleston. Then take it down to four minutes, then down to three minutes, and eventually two minutes. Push yourself to make quick decisions through the Charleston. Finally, you can bring all those exercises together by playing a game of solitaire. That leads into the pick and discard phase of the game when you can make decisions on one pick at a time. It's a great way to learn all the hands on the card. When you play for the first time with a group, be patient with yourself and be patient with others because mistakes will be made. One of the common mistakes is that someone might play a hand from last year's card or someone will make an exposure on a closed hand. Those are the two most common mistakes made on a new card. So always check your card as you play the game and build your hand. And before you take the first discard to make an exposure, double check that you're playing an exposable hand. Phase three, acceptance. This phase in the life cycle of an American Mahjong card comes after the honeymoon period. Players have become acclimated to the changes in the new card. In this phase, play often, both live and online. When you play live, find a peer group so that you can relax and have fun. But also, try to join a group with more advanced players. There's always something that can be learned by observing experienced players. Consider playing online. I'm an affiliate at Mahjong Time because I believe it's the best online platform for Mahjong. Look for my email in the video description below and I can send you some information. If you don't have a group to play with, contact your local synagogue, rec center, and senior centers because there could be established groups there. If not, consider creating one of your own. I actually have a video on how to create a meetup. If you find that you're a competitive player, consider playing in a tournament in this phase. If you've never played in a tournament, you will have a level of anxiety, but it usually goes away after the first game because you will have understood the rules and you will have gotten a feel for the player base. There are local tournaments with less than a hundred players typically and there are nationwide tournaments with a range of players between a hundred and three hundred and fifty. If you like to play competitively, this is a great arena. Phase four, apathy. This phase in the life cycle of an American Mahjong card is when some players get bored with the annual card. This boredom typically starts in December for some players. Others might not get bored until January or February. And then of course we have the anticipation in March and April. There are ways that you can both add challenge and variety to your game to avoid apathy with the card. The first is the dot challenge. It's best if you start this challenge in April when you get your new card. The idea is that you play and try to win every hand on the card. When you win, you mark it with a dot, either with a Sharpie or a sticker. Try to win every hand on the card 
before the release of the next card. You can add variety to your game by playing with a different American Mahjong card. There are organizations that use the same conventions as the National Mahjong League. It's just that the categories and the combinations themselves that are different. One organization is called the American Mahjong Association. There's also the Next Generation League, Marvelous Mahjong, and Siamese Mahjong, the two-player game. They all release their cards in January, which typically is the peak of boredom for the National Mahjong League card. You can also play with an add-on game. John Davis created Mahjmania. He has a deck of cards that you use as an add-on to your regular game and it changes things up based on the cards in use. Also, I made a game called Anarchy. It's all about house rules. Look for information in the video description below for all of these ideas. The level of anxiety and duration of each phase in the life cycle of the card depends on how long someone has played the game and how often they play. For example, New players may have more anxiety as they wait for the new card and it takes longer for them to acclimate to it. Also, they may not get bored of the card until February. Conversely, experienced players have less anxiety as they wait for the card and they acclimate to it quickly. Also, experienced players may get bored of the card as early as November. Finally, I'd like to recommend some Facebook groups. The first is Mahjong That's It. This is the largest group of Mahjong enthusiasts on Facebook. If you like to play Siamese Mahjong, there's a Facebook group called the Siamese Mahjong Guild. If you're having trouble finding a group to play with or an instructor, join Mahjong Community. Also consider joining my Facebook group, Mahjong Central. Be sure to look in the video description below for information that I shared throughout this video. I hope these ideas help you enjoy each phase in the life cycle of an American Mahjong card. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click that little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.